All right, Buccaneer fans, welcome to a down, down, down edition of the No Quarter Given podcast, a heartbreaking divisional loss to the Los Angeles Rams, 30 to 27, Sunday, Raymond James Stadium. You know, you, if you saw the game, you know the heartbreak that we're feeling here in Tampa with the, with the tremendous comeback after getting pounded here for the first two and a half quarters. Tom Brady brings us back. That I won't say Tom Brady alone, but he was a, he was the the ringleader here to bring us back, get back in the game. Twenty seven all, end up losing the game thirty to twenty seven on a last second field goal by former Buccaneer Matt Gay to put us out of the playoffs. Had a chance for to host the NFC title game and such. So Peter Blake, welcome to the podcast. Just your initial thoughts of. What were your thoughts when Cooper Cup's running uncovered right down the middle of the field? I mean, uh, I was like, what is going on? Uh, it's heartbreaking. You have to get on air right afterwards. That's exactly what I did. In fact, I was watching it with a friend. I decided to go home early, watch the game here. Maybe it would get some extra juju. It kind of did that, if you will. And you see them come back from 27 to 3 all the way to tie the game. And from some unknown reason, I feel like this Bucks defense could have played for overtime if you kind of play conservative, if you will. Uh, you go all out blitz, zero blitz, or whatever kind of blitz it was. It didn't get into Stafford's face. He throws it up to Cup. He kills you for 44 yards. And here we go again, Jason Powers, another former kicker, killing us. It was Cairo Santos last year. <laughs> this year, it's Matt Gay. I can't figure it out. It's disappointing. It's almost like Saints part two, except it's the Rams. And the Rams have had her number throughout history and this year. Over three in the playoffs now versus the Rams. Remember, we lose in 79, we lose in 99, and then we lose another heartbreaker here in, uh, in 2022, uh, the early parts of 2022. But let's, let's go through the game a little bit. Let's go through a couple of segments of the game. I'll yeah. get your opinion, all that stuff. Obviously, the, the, the Rams jump out quick, 7 nothing. They get out to a 10 nothing lead early in the first quarter. The Bucs respond, get a field goal, cut it to 10-3. to And then one of the first pivotal points in the game, third and 20, early second quarter, again, the secondary. That's been an issue all year, not just because of injury, but a lot of blown coverages and such. You thought, okay, veteran group now. We got guys that have played a lot of ball. The, the secondary is back intact this week. All the guys played that we wanted to play, expected to play, but just a massive blown coverage down the right sideline. Cooper Cup goes 70 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, 70 yards for a touchdown. I don't know necessarily what happened, but obviously Levante David was upset about it because he took his helmet off and threw it. And we've talked about it. It's all about communication. And obviously that was missing. And we also talked about this all year long with this team, as great as they've been, They've gotten off to slow starts, and eventually we knew it would come back to haunt them. And you have third and 20. You have an opportunity to stop this potent offense. You've got to do it. You can't allow Cooper Cup to once again kill you, and he has been a buccaneer killer. Absolutely. No, absolutely. He ends up, you know, I, I remember talking to TJ last week. The last thing I said to TJ, he was on the Powers on Sports podcast with me, TJ Reeves, Buccaneer sideline reporter. Do not let Cooper Cup kill you. Make the ball go somewhere else. Yeah. And, and, you know, third and 20 there. Obviously, we had the overtime play, the two plays in overtime that he kills you. But uh, give him credit. That guy is an unbelievable route runner. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's a tremendous route runner, ball handler. Great. He doesn't drop balls. And he and Stafford are on a wavelength that is hard to match. Yeah, I mean, not overtime before the fourth quarter. You thought you were going to overtime, but of course, Cooper Cup had something to say about that. And that's the exact reason why, Jason, he's in the conversation for MVP of the league because he is that valuable to that offense. He does everything. People go, you know, he's not flashy. Why? Because he does everything consistently all the time. And he does it with, uh, you know, grace and presence, not, you know, like uh, a lot of the uh, diva wide receivers in the league. He just continues to get it done. It's not flashy. It's the reason why the Rams are going to be in the NFC championship game and the Bucs are not. And unfortunately, I don't understand 
what defense was called on third and 20 to allow somebody to go 70 yards. I'll never know. I don't understand it, but look, it looked like on the on TV, it looked like it was cover two. It looks like Carlton Davis let Cooper run by him thinking the safety Mike, Mike Edwards was going to be there to help. Edwards jumped on a crossing route by the tight end. Nobody down the sideline, you know, and Cooper cup catches the ball uncontested cuts across the field, back across the field and walks in the end zone, basically. And you got to love Mike Edwards, um, you know, his ball hawking skills. But the thing that I watch with him, sometimes he yep. kind of just doesn't know what's going on or kind of does. does his own thing because he's trying to make plays instead of make the play, which run is on the defense, run his play your role in the defense, right. do your job. I mean, it goes back to the new England Patriots. When Tom Brady came down here, do your job. When your job is not done. They're going to expose you, and, uh, you know, that's the reason why maybe Mike Edwards isn't starting a starting safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's just a, a slot guy or a backup. Yeah, and, my, and that, that may be the case. All right, so it's 17-3 at that point. Gronk Brady throws an interception to Gronk intended for Gronkowski. Rams get more great field position, up 20-3 to at that point. Late right. in the second quarter, you're thinking they score a touchdown, 27-3 at the half. It's lights out. And yeah. Raymond James, and we get we get a play. Antoine Winfield takes Cam Makers to the ground at the one yard line. The ball comes loose. He jumps on the fumble. Replay review overturns the the the, the, the down by contact call. The Buccaneers get a massive break there. It's only twenty to three at the half. You're thinking, okay, there's still hope here. The Rams do get the ball to start the second half, but you but you could tell the defense was starting to play a little bit better in that second quarter. It wasn't as easy as it had been in the first quarter for the Rams. You're exactly right. And, and my your question for you is, why is Tom Brady throwing the ball in his own end zone at that point? Why not try to run the ball, be a little bit more conservative, take time off the clock at that point? You don't want to throw an interception. Buck's very lucky and fortunate that there was a fumble caused by Antoine Winfield, or you're exactly right. They would have went down 27 to three. So Cam Akers putting the ball on the ground that definitely helped the Bucks all day long, that defense doing what they always do to cause turnovers. But that first half was just dreadful. It was awful football. You feel bad because it's a full house to watch that yep. effort to see that you're like, Oh, here we go again. The so third quarter comes. We stop them early in the third quarter, three and out on the first drive. We don't get anything going. We punt back. The Rams go down and score on that second drive of the third quarter, about midway through the third quarter. It's 27 to three. And Bucks fans, if you're, I mean, I mean, we, you're thinking we're getting run out of the building here. The only, the only grace you thought was, okay, Mr. Brady's done this before. Sure. Down 28 to three to the Falcons. That's the only glimmer of hope that you can hold on to in the third quarter. They go down on the next drive. They settle for a field goal. They kick a field goal at 24 to 27 to three. A lot of people think, why don't they go for it? If I remember, it was like fourth and eight, fourth and nine. Suck up comes in and kicks the field goal. I thought that was the right move at the time. You still had about 20 minutes left in the game to potentially make something happen. Suck up makes it 27 to six. You get I believe did they get a turnover after that 27 to 6? Yeah, they, just... they get a Jamel Dean causes a yes. Cooper Cup to fumble the yes. ball. Bucks get the ball back. Of course, they go in and, and score a touchdown after Fournette. that. Fournette. And, right. 27 to 13 at that point. Uh, and you're feeling you're feeling good. Maybe, maybe something can happen here. And first, sure enough, first play. Of the, yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's 27 13. First play. I think he scored like 30 seconds into the fourth quarter. No, actually yeah. it was like the last 30 seconds of the third quarter actually with yep. one. Yep. So it's 27, 13 going to the fourth. They kind of, they go a possession or two each in the fourth quarter, don't do anything. And then all of a sudden the Buc Brady stripped, they recovered Vaughn, Vaughn Miller, by the way, Donovan Smith had a rough day at left tackle. Oof. Did not play very well at left tackle. Not at Even, all. I mean, you knew the right side was going to be an issue with no Tristan <laughs> Wirfs, but Donovan Smith did not have a, a stellar day at left tackle and you needed him to play well. So you could roll the, so you could roll the protection to the right side to help out Josh Wells and company didn't play well. Vaughn Miller around the corner, strip sack, fumble recovery at the 30. Then we get the break of all breaks on the next play. The ball gets snapped 20 yards over Stafford's shoulder, <laughs> not ready. Yep. And JPP falls on it at about the 45 yard line. 
Yeah, he falls on it at that point. It's like Keystone Cops at that juncture. What the heck is going on? Matt Stafford's not ready for the ball, and here we go. Bucks have a chance. So, uh, but you thought at that point when Brady was stripped, the game was oh, over. With. It's yeah. over with at that point, and it was constant pressure all day long. You knew an hour before the game it was going to be rough. I was under the impression that Tristan Warfs is going to play in this game. He was inactive. In fact, he has pretty serious ankle injury, ligaments, and stuff like that. Josh Wells was already hurt. It was a rough day, and you're exactly right. When you double on that right side, you expect Donovan Smith who to play a lot better, and he was very ineffective versus Yvonne Miller on Sunday. And then you get another break. You get Matt Gay coming up short on a 47-yard field goal, which – would have been 30 to 13, which would have been lights out at the time. There just wouldn't have been enough time for three possessions. Sure. So you get another break. Apparently, I didn't, re- you know, the reports came out he had hurt himself in pregame warm up a little bit or something to where the range wasn't what you thought it was. But sneezing? It- I mean, he's 70% at Raymond James Stadium. I wouldn't <laughs> want to kick there either. I mean, that's the reason why he's not the Bucks kicker in the first place. Right. And of course, right. you have fans on Facebook saying, well, you know, the, the fans, they shouldn't mess with Matt Gay because he kicked the game winner. Uh, Matt Gay shouldn't have been the kicker of this team, especially when you're 70% at Raymond James Stadium. Not good. Not good at all. And you're exactly right. That 47 yard, I thought it was classic, classic Matt Gay. Uh, great job. So then the Bucks get the ball back with about five minutes to go. They get to about midfield or so. And then Mike Evans torches Jalen Ramsey on a go route. Brady with a perfect throw down the right sideline. And you got about three minutes to go and it's 27, 20. And all of a sudden, remember the bucks had used all their timeouts yeah. on the Rams previous drive to get the ball back. And you had to do that. You can't fault Arians for doing that. Cause if you don't do that, you don't have time to get the first touchdown, much less the second one. So they burn their timeout, smart move. Evans bombs away after that touchdown, 27, 20. Did you agree with them kicking the ball deep? Or do you think they should have onside kick there? Well, the way Bradley Penny was kicking all day long, was kicking the ball out of the bound, out of bounds. Who knows what he would have done at that point? But uh, I, I think you're kind of right. I mean, Squib kick it. You know, maybe instead of trying to kick it out of uh, kick it out of the end zone, Squib kick it. You know, waste. The, I don't know. I don't know, man. So the Bucks. And by the way, Penny was a disaster kicking off. I mean, you cannot Horrible. in the NFL. You cannot kick the ball out of bounds twice. Yeah. In, a, in, a, in, a, in a game, much less a playoff game. Yeah, I, I would have never onside kicked it because I didn't think he could accomplish yeah. it. Couldn't even kick in bounds. So kick the ball away. Take your chances at that point. Let your defense. I think there was 330 left in the game, which would have meant the Rams would have had to get a first down for them to ice the game. Right. And then we have second and nine, second and 10, whatever it was. Sue with a tremendous play in the hole, getting his hand in there. Ripping the ball out from Akers, who's carrying – he wasn't carrying it like a loaf of bread, but he was not protecting it very well for a situation that you need to protect the ball. A little surprised Sony Michelle wasn't in the game. So it's kind of ice it. He's always good at ball security. The ball's on the ground, and Levante David recovers it, what, the 30-yard line, 32-yard line, whatever it was. And the Bucks are in business with about 2.15 left in the ball game. And even TJ Reeves, who was in the stadium, I heard his other uh, podcast, uh, all, all About Bucks, I think that's what it's called, or uh, Nothing yep. But Bucks, excuse me. Yep. He said that was the loudest he's ever heard it, and that's how it was. It seemed like it was on TV. When that fumble happened, that place erupted because at that point, you knew that Tom Brady and the Bucks were going to come back. There was a chance to come back. You knew it was going to happen, and when it happened, boy, Goodness gracious. Uh, I mean, I was at a sports bar and it erupted. I mean, unbel- I mean, you're thinking Atlanta, New England back in the day. You're thinking yeah. uh, m- miracle at the Meadowlands kind of fumble. I mm. mean, just absolute mayhem broke out the place I was at when, when that ball is loose. And, and le- All right, so the Bucks get the ball. Controversial play, which I think this played into the last drive of the game and potentially hurt the Buccaneers. Break kept catches a ball on third and eight, and they call him a yard short. When on TV, it looks like he made the first down. You know, it looks like he's got a first down, which create now creates a fourth down situation for the Buccaneers. And I think if the Bucs get a first down there and don't have to, you know, they, obviously they run the ball on fourth down, Fournette scores, but if they have a first down there, 
I think they burn a little more of that clock to prevent the Rams from even getting the ball with any kind of time to do anything. So I think that fourth down play really hurt the Bucs that they had to run a fourth down play and not be in first and goal. Your thoughts? If you're, if you're four net at that point, I mean, you get to the one yard line. Do you kind of dunk down a little bit? Yeah. Maybe take a knee? I mean, you can't do that. I, 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 I'm looking at it. And I'm thinking, no, you can't do that. But then you've got what? 42 seconds left on the clock at that point. That's still way too much time for Matt Stafford. You would think your defense at that point would go into conservative mode. Of course, you don't want to give that much uh, yardage up. So Matt Gay can kick the winning field goal, but. And let's give Man, let's give Fournette credit on the run. What a job avoiding yeah. that blitzing linebacker in the hole who had yeah. an uncontested run at him. Uh, great footwork to get to the outside and walk in the end zone. Yeah, Lombardi Lenny was uh, absolutely top notch. Uh, I've been wrong about him. He has been tremendous ever since the postseason last year. Uh, the victim of no carries uh, <laughs> is most likely going to be off this team. And it looked like defensively the alignment was they were thinking Brady was going to go. Up oh, absolutely. The sneak, and they gave it to Fournette. He had to make a little move. But once he made that move, it was to the house, my friend. And we got a tie game. So 27 all 42 seconds to go. You're not sure what the Rams are doing. You don't know if they're on full tilt. Because of the Acres fumble, they've melted down in the 49er game a couple of weeks ago. They come out throwing on first down. We sack Stafford, and the ball is this close to coming out on his way down to the ground. Yes, yes. The ball almost comes out. Yes. I mean, we're that far away from it being a loose ball fumble type yep. situation. I was still, I was then surprised that the Rams then called timeout immediately after that play. Give McVay credit. He did that. He was going to stay aggressive. And then second down, the, the buck killer himself, Cooper Cup, puts a great move on Sean Murphy Bunning on a little, on a little wiggle, wiggle route in the middle of the field. Bunning falls down. Cup breaks it back to the outside for about 18 to 20. They're at 45-yard line, which is then going to set up the play we're going to talk about here in one second. Yeah, I mean, nobody seemed like they could tackle Cup all day long and on this play especially, and it's like tackle him because, look, if you can tackle him and bounce, that's going to waste the clock. They're going to have to get up there, and that may be the game at that point. You may not right. have another play because they had no timeouts. Right. So it's just like, man, somebody and it pro And that probably would have changed the Bucks Bowles' defensive philosophy if that clock was in bounds. He's uh -huh. most likely not blitzing that next play because – they probably would have burned another 15 seconds trying to snap the ball for the next play. So he would have probably been conservative as far as the defense goes. So Bowles calls a blitz. It looks like Murphy Bunning blitzes from the slot. It looks mm -hmm. like Devin White goes and covers the back. The question of the day is, on the replay, you see Levante David standing in the middle of the field doing nothing. Is he supposed to blitz? Is he supposed to cover somebody? He just looks like he's lost. Who knows whose responsibility was he supposed to blitz, not blitz. He doesn't blitz. Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup goes from the slot right down the hash mark, splits Edwards and Winfield. And if you're one of those two guys there, knowing you don't have any safety help, I know you don't want to do this in real time, but do you tackle the guy? I mean, do you figure out, uh oh, shit, I don't have no help, and tackle them, hold them, something, because yeah. you can't let them run right by you when there's no safety help. I agree. It's a mismatch nightmare with Winfield. I mean, we've seen him in coverage. He's not bad, but against Cooper Cup, and I agree with you on that. Somebody asked me that off air. Do you grab him at that point? Yeah, I think you do. If you feel like you got no help, I mean, what's the penalty going to be? It's not going to be as long as it was, maybe 15 yards, 15, 20 yards. You, you set up the field goal of Matt Gay, and you take your chances, yep. and at that point, you feel a lot better about Matt Gay in a long field goal instead of 30 yards. And give Stafford credit. I mean, the Bucs did not get to him. Sue was about a step away from getting to him. Mm -hmm. Give Stafford credit for making the throw. Not a difficult throw because you're just throwing a moon ball to open field to go get it. But but he made the throw. He stood in there, you know, um, and give him credit. They go ground the ball. Even then, Matt Gay, I said it the moment he lined up, he, he almost hooked that ball outside the post. He was yep. on the left hash mark. That ball was barely inside the, the left upright couple feet. I could tell by his alignment, he wasn't wide enough on his approach. And I knew it was going to be close to the left upright. He makes the kick. You know, the Bucks obviously, there's no nothing, there's no remedy there. 
Game's yeah. over, all that stuff. Bucks go down 30 to 27. Yep, 30 to 27. And and you're exactly right. It kind of reminded me of the Giants game where he has it all lined up and he, he misses it completely, like yeah. from 34 yards or something. And this time it's 30 yards. It looked close, but he made it. And just heartbreak, man. Just absolute heartbreak. What'd you think of the uh the unsportsmanlike fouls? Look like the Bucks got a little undisciplined there in that first quarter and a half. They got out of there. They got frazzled. They got, I think they were expecting, you know, they weren't expecting to be down 20 to 3, 17 3. You saw Levante David. You saw Sue, which I'll give Sue credit. Stafford, mm. if you watch that replay, yes. when he goes to the ground, he comes up with his cleats up to, to Sue. Correct. That Hockley either didn't see or didn't realize was a, to me, that was an absolutely intentional act by Stafford. Not saying you penalize it but you at least let Sue say what he was going to say to Stafford. I agree with you on that. And I played the replay. People were like, well, he's just rolling over and all this. No, no. he put his foot up oh. into his groin. And, and then he's it. trying to, right. He, right. And he's trying to act like, oh, I'm going to help you up, Sue. And Sue knew it. And Sue yep. was upset about it. And people were like, well, Stafford would never do that. Well, you don't know what they're going to do uh, in, in the, uh, you know, the heart of action at that point. Um, and remember their former teammates in Detroit too. Right. So who knows what their relationship was in Detroit? You don't know. The, the Tom Brady thing that was just hockey. League. This would be Sean, not Ed, his father. Yeah. That would be Sean trying to basically prove a point because Brady during the week said, yep. "I get away with this, I get away with that." To me, Von Miller should have been penalized. It should have been offsetting penalties. And at that point, you're going helmet to helmet shot. You're making Tom Brady bleed. He's upset about it because uh, supposedly the rule is we're we're protecting the quarterback, not going helmet to helmet. You go helmet to helmet. He gets a busted lip and then he gets a 15 yard penalty. Ridiculous. And then Levante David, that was frustration at that point. But yeah, that, that was a problem throughout the year. Also, we saw Carlton Davis get penalized on the last game versus the Philadelphia Eagles. I get it. Football is about emotion, but you have to keep your emotions in check with the Sioux penalty. I thought it should have been offsetting or wiped off the board. The Brady thing to me was clear. Von Miller went helmet to helmet. Levante David was wrong in taking off his helmet. That was frustration. So disappointing. Uh, all right. So Bucks go down 30 to 27. They end the year 14 and five NFC South champions. Obviously we lose in the divisional round. Let's yeah. do a little, let's go around the roster a little bit. And talk about a couple of, of, of areas. Sure. To me, I thought that I thought the problem area all year was not the not the was the play of the secondary. Front mm-hmm. seven was fine. Obviously, I know the secondary had injury issues, but even the guys that were there, I don't think they played very well as a unit the whole year. Well, it was the first game, Jason, playing together. Their first game all year long playing with playing against the Rams. So look, they have some decisions they have to make. Carlton Davis is a free agent. You may franchise him, you may not. But to me, that defense is different when he's not in there. You had to depend on a lot of guys. I think the most disappointing unit was the front and that would be JPP because he was hurt all year long. And then also father time, you're going to have to make some decisions up front. You have William Golston, I believe Sue is also a free agent. So there may be some changes there. Maybe you get some youth in the draft. Maybe you try another year depending on salary, but that's got to improve. I thought I would, I, I would say nobody will probably admit this publicly, but I don't think Devin White had a great year. He didn't have a great year. I, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit to it. I mean, I think he's definitely missing Levante David when he was hurt. Uh, he seemed like he was a better player, but there are times where Devin White uh, is running in the wrong place. or Freelancers. Not, Freelancers. Too much, way too much. And as a player, what is his third year? You would expect better from him. You would expect that postseason Devin White that took over games and, and, and made plays and, we didn't see enough of that this year. So that was disappointing. And, you know, I, I think uh, honestly the pass rush, I think Shaq Barrett has to play a lot better. I mean, it's just, it, it, there were sacks there, but it didn't happen like it did last year, especially in the postseason. They weren't a shutdown unit. They have to figure it out. They have to get some depth there. If they lose Byron Leftwich to the Jacksonville Jaguars, Jason Light gets a third round pick. You use that to supplement your defensive line and get younger there. They have lots of decisions to make, Yep. Uh, but it, it was not good enough. And then the rushing unit wasn't as good as it usually is. It wasn't, it took a step back. And I think a lot of that was because 
uh, JPP was injured and uh, maybe not as effective. So they're going to have to look into some things and make some tough decisions during this off season. No, I, I mean, yeah, and to me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a special teams point. I'm a special teams guy. I don't think Bradley Pinion had a good year punting the no, ball. No. I think for the amount of money he was making, he's making a lot of money for a punter. And I don't think he, I think he had some, some, I think you'll see the Buccaneers go in a younger direction, cheaper direction there, find a guy that can kick off to help suck up. It wouldn't shock me if suck up wasn't here next year. I don't know what, I don't know what his guaranteed money is for next year. It wouldn't shock me if they overturned both those spots, got younger, got cheaper there because both those guys are making some money. I think you, I, it wouldn't shock me at all. if Both those guys are uh, move on. Yeah, Suckup missed some extra points this year and also missed some kicks. Uh, You missed a kick in that game, which could have been the difference. So uh, I definitely think they're going to switch away from Bradley Pinion. Uh, And they also got to get a returner. I mean, look, Jaden Mickens wasn't great, but Jalen Darnham was worse. He looked like he was lost in the sauce. Uh, I get it. He's a rookie, but you got to get somebody back there that's competent, that can return some punts, return some kicks. And he looked just bad he you know what he looked like he looked like dexter jackson not the safety the guy they drafted out of appalachian state who could not stay on his feet you'll get this information from by the way buckpower.com be able to look at dexter jackson being a a second round pick but yeah they called him no traction jackson and that's what i felt like when i was watching jalen darden uh some sundays honestly all right let's talk about a couple positive things during the year i thought Offensive line wise, pretty good. I mean, the solid. I liked, you know, you're gonna have a decision to make with Kappa and Stinney. Probably one of those two guys stays and the other one goes as far as free agency. You got to make a decision there. Ryan Jensen, do you bring him back or do you give Robert Hainsey a shot there? Sure. You drafted him out of Notre Dame in the third round, kind of grooming him to be the guy. Does he does he take over at center? You know, uh, re, you know, receiver receiver wise, again. Jalen Darden, is he going to be an impact player at receiver, a third or fourth guy? Who knows? You need definitely need a, you need some depth at receiver. I think Tyler Johnson uh, up and down, had a big drop Sunday, he dropped the third down conversion. Uh, yep. it, it, disappointing. Just, Disapp- yep. Really disappointing coming off last year because he yep. made some big catches in some big situations, especially in the postseason, and his development is not there yet. Scott came into camp out of shape. He yeah. came into training camp out of shape. And it never got any better. It didn't seem like he yeah. just, he, when you look at him, he just looks like he's a little chunky, like he's a little too heavy. If he lost 10 or 15 pounds, he might gain that one little extra half step or step to get him open. Cause he, he made some great catches, major contributor last year in the playoff run. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, get on that TV 12 method to get yeah. with those guys. And, and, and that's what it's about. You know, get with the Mike Evans, get with the Chris Godwin, even though he's coming off an injury, because they're going to show you how to be a professional. Not saying Johnson is a professional, but going from college football to the NFL is definitely a different transition, a, a difficult transition to a certain degree. So I think that's mostly disappointing. And then Scotty Miller, his disappearance, whether he was hurt or not in the offense. So this team has some decisions to make. I think it starts, of course, with Tom Brady. That's yeah. been the talk this week. Is he going to come back? I mean, Jason, you look at his comments and it certainly seems like he's kind of weighing those options right now. And a lot of it is not only on the family aspect with Giselle and his kids, but also the fact of what will the Bucks do? What will they be able to do in free agency? You hear from BA this week. He doesn't know if they're going to be able to bring back all their free agents. Uh, the cap is expanding, but they do have a lot of money. Uh, locked in here. So they're going to have to make some tough decisions, but you would think that if Tom Brady comes back, Rob Gronkowski comes back, I think that's another unit that was disappointing, right? I mean, we expected big things out of OJ Howard. I get it. He's coming off an injury. He was non-existent. Cameron Brait was okay. They may have to upgrade that situation. So lots of changes could be coming, but I think it starts with Brady and the decision if he's going to retire or not. If he retires, do you think they're comfortable, even though B.A. says he's comfortable, no. going with a Blaine <laughs> Gabbert or a Kyle Trask? Or no do you think they go big quarterback hunting for Russell Wilson or possibly, as crazy as it sounds, an Aaron Rodgers? The only way Kyle Trask is the quarterback next year, first of all, Blaine Gabbert has zero chance of being the quarterback next year. <laughs> zero. Neither does, Ryan, neither does Ryan Griffin. Right. As a starter. Now, could they be come back as the backup? Potentially. Zero chance to be the starter. 
it's either Brady. If, if the Bucs make a decision that Brady retires and they say, you know what, we're going to strip it down for a year, they'll give Kyle Trask a year to see what he, they've got in him. But if they decide, even if Brady retires, but they really think they could get a big name, a Russell Wilson, a Desha- who knows, even a Deshaun Watson kind of guy, they would do that, I think. But if they decide, hey, we're going to give Kyle Trask a year, then you're going to see a lot of these, all the veteran guys are going to be gone. They're going to strip it down for a year, try to build it back up. I, I think on to the Brady thing, you're right. This is the most speculation he's had in a while about his future. I think, obviously, I think this, this is Giselle-driven. I think if there was no Giselle in the picture, there'd be no doubt Tom Brady's playing next year. I think he's going to think long and hard for a month, and I think they're going to come out as a family and come out and make a de- decision to say, we're going to let Tom play one more year, and Tom's going to announce next year's going to be it. I think – that's what I think is going to happen. It's going to be a one-year kind of a, I won't say going away season, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm playing one more year and that's it. Yeah, final dance. And, and at that point, then, you know, the possibilities are endless because I think uh, Gronk will come back. Yep. Uh, you'll figure out the Godwin situation. You cannot let him get out of that building, Jason Powers. 98 receptions. He absolutely deserves a contract extension. Sure. How much you have to pay him. And I would supplement that by going after an OBJ or a wide receiver, unless they're happy with a John Brown, which they're not. Oh, no. You know, well, no, I mean, no. maybe they're not. Maybe they are. He knows the offense. Uh, he's, he's no, right now. don't say John Brown, bro. Come no. on now. No, John Come Brown. On. No, he's highly productive in BA's offense in Arizona. I'm just saying. Here's the thing I'll say if Tom Brady says I'm back for one more year, you're going to be able to get a, gr- a very good number three receiver, a OBJ kind of guy, a, a, you know, a Juju Smith Schuster kind of guy. He'd be a go. perfect kind of number three yeah. that you can put in the slot along yeah. with Godwin and Evans. And, and again, or you draft somebody or you possibly could draft a wide receiver in this. Yep. And, and, and look, you could have done that last year. I mean, you look at the draft overall, the impact of last year's draft. And we talked about it before the season. Bucks really had no needs at that point. So they drafted for, you know, yeah. talent or depth. Yeah. But in a year yeah, from that, now, in a but, year, in a year down the road. Right. But none of these guys really made an impact. Even a Joe Tryon, he had flashes of brilliance, but at some points he looked kind of lost too. So, you know, you're going to see him. He, I think you're going to see JPP gone no matter what. He won't be back. I don't think. I think a guy like you might keep Miller only because he's cheap and he's on his rookie contract, maybe. But I mean, no, Von Miller. Von Miller. Miller. Right. 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 That'd be a kind of guy, if you know Brady's back for one more year, that's right. the kind of guy you make a run at sure. is a Vaughn Miller kind of guy for sure. Right. Um, you know, but even if you think Tryon can do it, you put tr- – but I think you'd see Sue back. I think Sue would come back for one more run. You've locked up Vita Vea, which is a great move. But, again, you need some production by Barrett. You need some more production out of JP, or Shaq Barrett. And, you need, and you're right, you need a threat on the other side. If you could get Vaughn Miller, you would absolutely get him. Uh, I think you'll see Golston move on. JPP will probably move on. You know, who knows what they do with Rakeem Noches and a McClendon. One of those two probably stay as well, a reserve. Nacho, Nacho, to me, definitely is a guy that's developing. And Golston, yep. I, I believe, would be a, a – they need to sign him. Uh, JPP, okay. I love. I just got to figure out how much money you're going to sign him for. You got to look at the tape. Was it injury or was it that he's getting up there in age? But right. I feel like you look, if you have an opportunity to you maybe get, because I talked to a guy by the name of Harry, the Greek professional handicapper extraordinaire. He believes that Keem Hicks as a defensive tackle from the Chicago bears could be out there. Is that an upgrade over Sue? Probably. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Uh, you got to think about upgrading your team. I get it. You have lots of fan favorites and guys that are productive, but eventually that age thing comes into consideration and how much you're going to pay. And look, I don't necessarily believe the Bucks are in a bad situation. It's not like the Saints where Sean Payton walked no. away this week and you're 70 million in the hole. It's nothing like that. Jason Light and Mike Greenberg and John Spitek have done a phenomenal job and the Glazers have basically signed off on it. So Am I thinking money is going to be a situation that's going to be difficult for them? No, not at all. I think they're going to do everything they can to bring back Tom Brady, and that means to supplement this uh, this roster by making it either 
uh, full of some veterans, some key veterans that are going to help out in some key positions that we've talked about that were you know disappointing last year, or you're going to draft and, and get younger. But at the end of the day, this roster has to be better in order, in my opinion, to convince Tom Brady to come back for another year. I no, I mean I agree. I, I, again, the errors you can again, you're going to get a lot of these veterans on one year deals, which is not going to be salary cap disaster for you. Sure. The areas I think you can trim some money. Suck up and pinion. They probably make seven or eight million dollars between them. Sure. You can get rid of one or both to, to scale that down to three million. Get two guys at a million and a half, even if they're younger and a little more unreliable. Those are areas you have to you have to supplement. Maybe you don't pay Blaine Gabbert five million dollars to be the backup. You let Kyle Trask be the backup. You hate to say it, but you got to, I mean, you know, you maybe you make Kyle Trask the backup and sure. save a couple million bucks there. The big decisions for me, offensive line, you bring back Jensen, yes. you bring back Stinney or Kappa, one of those two guys. I think uh, the most logical situation at this point to save money as well as Cap has played. He's probably going to get overpaid by a team as he should. He deserves it. I'm not yep. sure the Bucks are going to pay him the way that Stinney has played in his uh, absence. Uh, you really haven't seen a difference. So I would go. Or you draft him. somebody. You could right. draft a lineman. Sure. You could absolutely do that. I think Jensen will stay because Jensen is kind of a Brady guy at that point. Uh, the offensive line is very good. I mean, that's the decision you have to make at this point. And then some people will say Donovan Smith played poor versus Von Miller. Maybe you look at, at that situation and you, and you go a different direction, but here's, here's something to be aware of. Yeah. Would not shock me. Donovan Smith either gets traded or released and you move and you flip Tristan Wurst to left tackle, which he played in college and was dominant. Well, that was kind of talked about, but then again, Smith did just get an extension. So again, somebody probably would take him though. I don't know. As a left tackle, he's a very yeah. he's, he's not great, but he's but he's above he's not average. He's he's kind of in between that. He's right. probably a number 10 left tackle in the league. He's not top 5, but he ain't bottom 10 either. He's somewhere in that 10 to 15 range as far as best left tackles and somebody would I think somebody if you really wanted to move him somebody would take him off your hands for a, for a mid-round draft pick and to take the salary cap off the Buccaneers as well. Well, the problem is if you do do that, then basically you've opened up another hole because Tristan Wirfs is going to yep. have to learn a new position. Yep. I get it. He played it in college, but still it's a transition process in the NFL yep. and you're going to absolutely have to draft, draft somebody a tackle at that point or go into free agency, take your chances at that True. point. So I, I'm not sure if they do that, but I understand where you're going with it. I understand that. I do they it. clean out the tight end room, OJ and Bray? Because obviously yeah. Gronk's decision is going to be based on Brady. What uh, do you I mean, do with Bray and Howard? Braid has earned a spot here. OJ Howard, uh, as much as I yeah. and I didn't like the pick, I wanted Dalvin Cook. Potential. Down to Potential. The, that's all it, that's all it is. It's the most overly used word. I don't know if it's the injury. I don't know what it is with OJ Howard. I don't know if the Bucks are happy with him. They may be happy with his blocking. Right. They may feel like he's going to get better. But to me, I think you got to get better in that room. And I think it starts with possibly letting OJ Howard go somewhere else. As, as much as I hate to say that, I think that's what it's going to come down to. Decision at running back. Fournette, Rojo, probably not keeping Rojo. Again, do you, you can't you can't overpay for Fournette. Though. You, can't, you cannot overpay for Fournette. Great. Vaughn showed some glimpses of hope there at the end of the year. So he sure. could definitely be your number two guy. So you have to make a decision. Do you, do you stay with Fournette or Rojo, or maybe do you go get somebody in free agency who might be available? Maybe a Saquon Barkley kind of guy, somebody wow. like that, that potentially could be available. Maybe. I mean, I think you go with Fournette depending on what the salary is. Rojo is gone. I've been yep. the biggest proponent for him, but I've seen enough. The text yep. message of pit in the palace to me, that just tells me, uh, he's obviously checked out. Uh, he has, he's regressed as a running back. He has not developed his skills of catching the ball consistently in pass protection. I saw more out of snake Vaughn than I saw out of Rojo. So Rojo's done. I'm not sure about Giovanni Bernard. Uh, maybe he's gone also. I mean, they, again, third down, he'd be a good third down. I could see him back as a third down. If, right. again, if Brady's here, you probably see Gio, Gio Bernard, or even, or maybe even a James White. I don't know what his situation is. That might be the situation where James White comes in for the for a swan song year as well. Who knows? Sure. I mean, look, you can find running backs in the later rounds. We've seen that. We've seen that before. We've seen Kareem Hunt, who's a third round pick. We've seen 
uh, guys like Alvin Camaro, who was a third, fourth round pick. So you can find those guys in the later rounds if you want to upgrade it. And from what you hear, the Bucs were interested in Travis ATN from Clemson. So I would not find it out of the realm of possibility that maybe the Bucs address that in the premium rounds or maybe the later rounds at this point. I definitely think they're going to address it. They're going to have to figure out that situation. I think Leonard Fournette has developed into the complete back that you want in this offense. You may have to pay him a little bit, but he deserves to be paid because he's been productive. Secondary-wise, you, you, you know, you got, um, you know, the only free agent I see is, is Carlton Davis. What do you do with him? Do you franchise him? Do you give him five, four years and, and $75 million? What, what, is he that good of a corner or is he good, but not great? What, what are your thoughts on Carlton Davis? I mean, I think for this team, he is, I think he's definitely shown he is. So uh, that's where I think they go with that on, on that, uh, the decision. franchise franchise uh, tag, maybe. Right. Pr- probably. And then Jordan Whitehead, isn't he a free agent also? He might be. I mean, he's played well. So those are the kind of decisions I'm glad I don't have to make uh, because you're devoting a lot of money to here, this position, that position at this point. I mean, is it time knowing what we know about Mike Edwards? Do you get rid of a white head? I mean, you saw some of the games he played this year where he's just all over the field, causing fumbles, getting interceptions. I'm not sure if I want to give up on that kid at this point. I like him better than Edwards, to be honest with you. I agree. Too many mental lapses for Edwards where he's in the wrong spot on a long touchdown. Agree. Agree. And he's had that throughout his career. I love Mike Edwards, but there's been some points that he just is not in the right place at the right time. Too much of what you said about Devin White, freelancer. And the good thing is you still got one more year with Dean and Murphy Bunning as far as making a financial decision on them. You don't have to pay them an extension yet. Do they maybe give one of those two guys a mid-level extension? Who knows? We'll see. Maybe it's a, a team-friendly extension type deal for those guys, but we'll see. But a lot of decisions to make. You definitely won't see the the whole band won't be back together like it was this year for Jason Light and company. And I think that's good. I think they need to now mix it up a little bit. You need sure. to infuse a little more youth and maybe a couple guys from other teams and other situations into the mix to make this more of a, a little more of a, I won't say hungry, because sometimes they look like they weren't hungry. They were yeah. just kind of going through the motions of, hey, we know we're better than you. You almost want to see some younger, a couple more younger guys in the mix that are really hungry. With the Byron Leftwich supposedly moving on to Jacksonville, we haven't got confirmation that's official, but it looks like it is going to be. Do you think the offense suffers, or do they actually get better with possibly B.A. making the calls? I can't kill Byron Leftwich. I thought he did a pretty good job. I mean, I, again – I'm sure Bruce Arians is in his ear more than we know as far as suggestions and certain play situations. I'm sure of that. But, you know, give Byron credit. He did a good job with Brady. He and Brady seemed to like each other. They didn't really have any issues. And you wonder with B.A., can he do both jobs super well? Can he be the head coach? And can he still call the plays and communicate with Tom and all that stuff that goes into being a – kind of being Tom Brady's ear, more more his ear – you're still going to have Clyde Christensen, but you just wonder how that how that relationship will go. You kind of feel like you just let Brady call the plays at this point, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why not? I mean, wh- why not? He's the greatest of all time. What do you have to lose at this point? You make him happy. You get him weapons. That's the reason why he came here in the first place. How about this? How about there's a possibility not only you lose a Byron Leftwich, but also a Todd Bowles because he's interviewing with various jobs, the Vikings, the Raiders. What if you lost both coordinators at that point? I mean, I'll give you, I'll get, I'll give you a name to remember if if Bowles moves on. Mm -hmm. A surprise firing that just happened a week ago. Wink Martindale in Baltimore got released. The defensive coordinator for the Ravens, Mm -hmm. three four defense, blitzer, that kind of an aggressive guy. Don't be. I that's to me. If Bowles leaves, keep an eye out on for Don Martindale to take over the defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers. And I think you could promote within, I've heard this, Larry Foots. Maybe Larry that Foote, too. Former linebacker for the Steelers and, of course, the Cardinals. That could be a young guy right there. And right. that's what we're kind of talking about here. You know, it's speculation. Yeah. It's nice. It feels good to a certain degree. You would like to be talking about the next playoff game. But that's really the fun with being 
a Bucks fan and doing this podcast, there is speculation. The season is still going on, even though it's not really going on because you have free agency, you have the draft, you have coaching changes. So it's an ever, it's a process that continues to go on, whether you're playing or not. And Bucks fans, we will do a no quarter given podcast as we get close to free, probably the week of free agency. We will probably get together and do a podcast for you guys with speculation and rumors and We'll know, we'll know much more information then about Brady's future, if yep. they've released guys, if they've got guys that they got targeted. So we will be back with you. We'll take a little break after after tonight, after this week, but we'll definitely be back with you. Remember, buckpower.com buck is where you go for all your Buccaneers uh, history, videos, audios. I think today that we're recording is the anniversary of the, of the Super Bowl in San Diego from 03. 19 years ago today the night to the day 48 the 21 stopping of the oakland raiders god that was beautiful I'll i gotta never t- i gotta tell you my story for the game so i'm in birmingham alabama small little sports bar not a lot of buck fans at that time i'm one of the few obviously the super bowl it's packed people from all over the place sure I'm in a Super Bowl square contest, right? One of the Super Bowl squares, mm-hmm. 50 bucks a pop, right? Mm-hmm. My numbers, what was the final score? 48-21, right? Yeah. My numbers are one and one. <laughs> and my man Dwight Smith goes coast to coast with like five seconds left in the game. Amazing. Goes from 41, one and one. To now 40 freaking eight. Oh, so I, I feel like I'm, doing this. So as I'm celebrating, the morning, I'm, winning the, I'm winning the Super Bowl. It's a done deal. If anything but a touchdown happens right there, your boy wins 1,500 more in the Super Bowl squares. Oh. But I get shunned at the gun by one Dwight Smith. How much do you hate Dwight Smith for that? I can't hate him, man, but damn, that would have been nice to have 15 hundo, man. Sure would have. Sure would have. <laughs> oh, man. I just I just remember the whole aspect of you're in the Super Bowl, and here's Jerry Rice, but he's not necessarily the same Jerry Rice. You know why? Because the defense shut him out until, like, the late third quarter. He didn't have a catch. I mean, that was so uh, surreal being in that game, of course. You know, those players being in that game, seeing the de- defense's dominance, getting up early, and basically just a blowout, just a complete blowout until the Raiders try to make it close. But that game was just never close at all. And remember the controversy that week. Remember, it was only one week in between, right? No yes. two-week buildup, one. Number two, the Raiders center, Barrett Robbins, went AWOL in Mexico. Remember that? Yeah, Tijuana or something. He went out before T, and they said, well, that was the reason why the Raiders weren't as good that day because they lost their center. Come on, man. And remember, obviously, the Gruden Oakland situation. He knew, knew you know, it sure. was, you know, uh, again, the Bucs knew the plays that were coming. It was unbelievable when you watch NFL films afterwards that yep. Lynch, Brooks, and Dexter Jackson are calling out the formations and calling out the plays as they're lining up and as they're getting mic'd up with NFL films, it was unbelievable how much they knew what was coming and where it was going. And who was playing Rich Gannon in that practice that week? John Gruden. He's, he's giving him every tendency that Rich Gannon yeah. is throwing out there. Yeah. And the defense is absolutely prepared. And people will go, well, that's the reason why they won the Super Bowl. Well, Bill Callahan and that coaching staff should have changed up their offensive calls. That's not the Bucks' fault. But I mean, it's just it's the beautiful thing to watch that the NFL films thing right on the week because he's telling him this is where you need to go. This is what he's going to do. This is how it's going to go. And but the really funny thing is, perfect. why didn't the uh, Oakland should have known the defensive guys over there should have known what Gruden likes to do. Correct. Well, should have been a similar, similar, you know, tendency. Wasn't. There was nothing They They couldn't do anything against Brad Johnson, Keaton McCardell. Yeah. Uh, what? Two touchdowns in this game. Yeah, two touchdowns yeah. from Keaton McCardell. Mike yeah. Austin double one, tremendous. And also, I believe this was the best game in Michael Pittman's. His only hundred yard game of the season was in the Super Bowl. Mike Pittman, there you go. 
Can you believe it's been 20 years since Michael Pittman's been a Buccaneer? God, it seems like just yesterday. His his son is playing for the Indianapolis Colts. That's when you know you're old. That's when you know you're getting old. Jesus. All right. Any other comments? You you, I, you, you, you see any major – obviously you have Bowles and, and Leftwich. Do you see any other major coaching changes with assistant coaches other than the coordinators? Or do you think as long – do you think here here's the question for you if brady does retire does does bruce arians pull the parachute in a month in middle of february brady says i'm done you think bruce arians pulls the parachute i think he may i think they may unless they want to go again big quarterback hunting unless they feel like their their team is there they have enough to go out and get one of these quarterbacks i Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, somebody like that, that's that's a free agent or for a trade, they may do that. If not, then it's going to be playing Gabbard and Kyle Trask. <laughs> it's going <gonna> to <be, laughs> be some interesting shows if that happens. <laughs> I'm also, I mean, I, I'm talking interesting. Like, you, you're going to talk about Bucks fans from going – like uh, what what Antonio Brown said, the pit for the palace. I mean, th- these people will be like on the Skyway Bridge at that point oh, saying, God. what the heck do we do? You know, we got Kyle Trask playing Gabbert. We're, all these players are leaving. This team is going to be awful. And you're sitting there trying to convince these Bucks fans, hey, it's going to be all right. And then you get off air and you're like, Man, this ain't gonna be all right. If Blaine Gabbert's a starting quarterback for the Buccaneers next year, I'm gonna uh, vomit in my mouth on the first episode of this show. I, I agree, and I don't want to see that. At all. <laughs> you, you eat a lot, I may vomit with you, and I got acid reflux, so I don't want to do that. Okay, I don't want to blow my damn uh, throat God. out there. It's just, I, I, just to think about it. You, you can't, hear that. That this, can't be a possibility. You hear that this week from BA, our Probably. quarterback contingency plan involves Blaine Gabbard and Kyle Trask. I don't hate Trask. I'm just not sure if he's ready yet. Right. I mean, he, he's not even your second or third. He's your fourth quarterback. You're trying to tell me that that's your quarterback contingency plan. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> and, what about Andrew Luck? I mean, as crazy as it sounds, Andrew Luck has been out of the league. Could B.A. convince an Andrew Luck or maybe even a Ben Roethlisberger, who he has connections with, connecting the dots, as far-fetched as it sounds, could he actually convince those quarterbacks to come out of retirement and play for the Bucs? Interesting. The Andrew Luck thing would be the, would be the, it, the wildest of wild cards Yep. with, with B.A.'s relationship. Yep. And I, I just wonder if the Bucks are prepared for it. I wonder if they're prepared. I can promise you there. I can promise you there are some meetings going on at one buck place this week or next week saying, let's put together five or six contingency plans of A, B, C, and D. I can promise you. Can, do we have the capital? Do we have the whatever? And combine, that's where a lot of these things happen. A lot of these trades get manufactured and put together at the yeah. combine. So, you know, let me ask you this. And I think Brady will let you know by mid February, what he's doing. Let me ask you this. As crazy as this sounds, Blaine Gabbert, (laughs) Kyle Trask, vomit, vomit, Jameis Winston. Oh my God. Not if Bruce Aries is here. (laughs) Never know. Oh my God! Please. I mean, that's what we're talking about, Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, we know that BA like Teddy. At a certain point, I think the luster's gone off of him a little bit. I mean, I don't know. I I'm I'm was anticipating that Brady was going to win the Super Bowl this year with the Bucks, and then he'll come back and try to win a third, and then he'll ride off into the sunset with BA, and eventually either Byron Leftwich or Todd Bowles or be your coach. Well, guess what? None of that's going to happen at this well, point. No, we don't know that. We, I don't think the Bucks will lose both guys, Bowles and Left, which I think one of the two will get a job. I don't think both of them will get a job. Not one in three in a row, and you're definitely not riding off into the sunset. You may win two out of the three years. And I don't think Tom. I don't think Tom Brady wants to go out down twenty-seven to three and lose him. Oh, I personally. agree. I, I agree. think he'll figure out a way to talk to uh, Giselle in the family into one more year and, and make it up and make it a family affair next year. Really, sure. really make it a, a joyous, everybody's involved kind of situation. 
you know, where he make knows, it, everybody, it, knows song, everybody knows, everybody knows this, yeah. this is the swan song. Go all Tony Dungy on it. You know, make the kids ball boys at this yeah. point. You know, get get the, the, the girl involved in cheerleading with the yeah, cheerleaders. Why not? Go all out. Giselle, she could be, you know, uh, in charge of the cheerleaders or whatever. Else. Get them all involved. <laughs> you know, sign them all up. Get a contract. Keep Brady for like five or ten more years. You know, just have him have a beard. Come out there like father time and still be throwing touchdowns. I mean, he was 43 touchdowns this year. And the yeah. talk of retirement is just insane to me because he's still playing at a high level how long can he do it well you know last sunday if he's getting hit that many times from the rams most likely not much but if you you're protecting him and you got all the weapons around him why not let's let's roll jason powers when's the last ultimate competitor superstar athlete who's playing at the top of his game really walked away barry sanders is probably the only one and Calvin Johnson. Yeah, but he had injuries. He was a lot more injured, a lot more issues. Andrew Luck, injuries. Brady's sure. injury-free, man. Say yeah. what you want. He is as healthy as you can be at 44. There's not been a guy since Barry Sanders, in my opinion, in pro sports that's just walked away. And his issue was he couldn't stand the organization because well, they were just so bad. There's well, not been a superstar athlete that's been on a great team and has been super productive. That's just walked away. That's not. That's not what those guys do. No, no, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And I, you always go back to basketball, right? For Michael Jordan. I mean, he left the Bulls. Where did he go? He went to the Wizards, and he was still an All Star. I mean, he's still playing right. at a high level. So, but he had, but he had issues with management too. He sure. had a lot of issues with Jerry Krause and the owner. That was an Oedipus to that. Remember, they said Phil Jackson was gone. It's not like they're running Bruce Arians out of here. Right. Well, the worst decision they ever made was getting rid of Jackson and, and Jerry Krause trying right. to run his own thing. I mean, they should have, they could have won another one or two years with the way the NBA was at that point. I mean, I don't, I don't understand, but that's a different subject. You're exactly right, though. You're not trying to run BA out of here. What I'm concerned about is the comments, and I know we're going a little long here, but I love this. Keep it going. Uh, turmoil. With Levante David, what was that about? Is that about Levant? Is that about Antonio Brown poisoning in the locker room, getting some players on his side? What do you think that was about? Probably that probably was Antonio Brown related. I think, you know, ultimately we all know that was probably a Tom Brady move, why he was on that team, Antonio Brown. And I I bet that probably rubbed some guys the wrong way. Not that Tom made a decision, but that he was so steadfast with even after the vaccination deal. Remember, Mike Edwards is involved in that too. Wasn't just Antonio. Mike Edwards on the defense was involved in that scheme as well. So, you know, I mean, again, you won't, I don't think you'll see that next year. If they, if they go hunting next year, free agent wise, you're not going to see the sketchy characters be brought in. It's going to be guys that I got good backgrounds, you know, that don't haven't had any issues off the field, that type thing. I don't think again, I don't think Devin White had his best year. I don't think – I mean, Levante David played good. He wasn't great this year. There were, Again, he's older, so he's probably got one year, maybe two years left. Again, we don't know what's in a locker room. We None of us know really, but I'm sure Antonio Brown was an issue in that locker room. Yeah, it certainly seems like it. And uh, people say Deshaun Watson, like, no, he's got issues off the field. I think the yeah. Bucs will stay away from that. Um, I think Brady comes back too, and it'll be great to talk about when he does. And if he doesn't, then man, we're going to have some crazy shows coming up. I'm telling you. All right, you. let's get it. I want to get a couple comments on the divisional games outside of the Bucks game from last week. Yes. Obviously the classic Buffalo, Kansas city. McDermott, what a game. I mean, both quarterbacks were unbelievable. 25 points scored in the last minute, 55 of that game plus overtime touchdown, unbelievable finish. My question is, and I've not heard anybody say this this week, and I said it the moment it happened, and I cannot believe that nobody thought of this. Why does Buffalo not drop 11 guys in coverage and rush nobody against Patrick Mahomes in the last 13 seconds? He's not going to run. If he runs, he's going to gain eight yards, and he loses. They're not running the ball. Why are you rushing four and not dropping 11 guys in coverage? Neither one of those plays happen if you don't rush anybody. 
No idea. I have no idea. Why not squib kick it and take more time off the clock? I don't understand it at all. But defense was optional in that game. But I tell you what was on display. Two of the best young quarterbacks that the NFL is going to love and fans are going to love for a long time. Because I love Josh Allen coming out. I liked him better than Baker Mayfield. He's definitely proven me right. And Patrick Mahomes just continues to be Patrick Mahomes. I don't understand how you let Tyree Kill get out, not tackle him, get out there in space and just make because you rush four guys. Out, right. You rush four guys. I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. And I don't like the overtime rule. I feel like both teams should have an opportunity. I didn't want the game to end like that. I get it. Defense is a big part of it. But you, you would like to see Josh Allen an opportunity with that offense to see if they could score again because that was a game that you never wanted to end, especially offensively. Oh, that was one of the top five playoff games of all time. Easy. Top Easy. five all-time playoff Easy. game, no Absolutely. doubt. With Absolutely. the drama of the last two minutes in overtime and the finality of overtime, and I think you're right. I, I think they will tweak the overtime rule. I don't think they'll do it for the regular season, but I think they'll tweak the overtime rule for the playoffs to give an opportunity that both teams get a, get a, get a chance in overtime of some sort as far as the possession goes. They should. And Gabriel Davis, uh, number 13, man, he was looking good. Woo! Four touchdowns, over 200 receiving yards. Amazing. The Buffalo Bills are going to have a hell of an offense next year, hopefully. And maybe a name that maybe is, is a guy that the Buccaneers potentially could be interested in as a one-year kind of guy, maybe an Emmanuel Sanders as a third down, as a third receiver. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of falling off. I'd rather have a John Brown or maybe an OBJ. Honestly. Okay, I'd rather have OBJ too. But Sanders is a good guy. No, is a very professional guy and all that stuff. Just a name to think about. Oh, all right, all right. San Francisco, Green Bay, Frozen Tundra, Aaron Rodgers vomits again. I, I want to say something else, but I, I want to keep the, the language clean here. Uh-huh. <laughs> what a! I mean, how many more times is this guy going to blame other people? Scores 10 points at home, third and 10, the last third down of the game. He's got Alan Lazard wide open on a crossing route. He's still running if he throws it to Alan Lazard. But he tries to throw a 50-yard bomb to Devontae Adams. Incomplete. They punt. 49ers go down, kick the field goal to beat them. More Aaron Rodgers meltdowns in the playoffs. Just He's just not a big game player in the playoffs. He's never been a big game player. And for people to compare him to Tom Brady and say he's one of the greatest of all time, look at his postseason record. It shows for itself. I don't think he wants to be in Green Bay. I don't think he's going to be in Green Bay. I think he's headed to the Denver Broncos. And I think there's a possibility that Devontae Adams could join him. As crazy wow. as that sounds. Wow. No, that's not, that's not crazy because they would – Denver would probably have to trade two ones – Maybe a Jerry Judy kind of guy, a receiver to open up a space for Devontae right. Adams from a salary cap perspective. I could definitely see that. Yep. I, yep. I could, you know, it, you could probably trade two ones and Teddy Bridgewater to give Green Bay somebody because they're not ready to play Jordan Love yet at quarterback. Oh, you're not you're not on the love boat there with Jordan Love. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you right now, though. If Devontae Adams doesn't go with Aaron Rodgers, I know where he goes to, and it's the perfect place. You go with the Raiders and Derek Carr, his former quarterback. That's where you go because you if have a the, legitimate need there. At if, wide you're the, if, if you're the Raiders, do you trade Derek Carr to, to Green Bay as part of the deal? Well, no, you don't have to trade. Uh, you don't have to trade Derek Carr for Devontae Adams. Devontae no, Adams. I'm talking about to. I'm talking about to go get Aaron Rodgers, and you trade Derek Carr to Green Bay. I would have said that. Devontae. I would have said that if John Gruden is there. I don't know who's going to be there. Could be Jim Harbaugh. You hear reports this week. Harbaugh could have been the next coach of the Bears. He wanted uh, the Gruden deal, hundred million dollars for ten years. That's not going to happen. The Bears are going in a different direction. You hear uh, Josh McDaniels. Yep, Josh McDaniels. They like him. So I would not, is in the mix. Yeah, I mean, I would not be surprised if Derek Carr is there and Devontae Adams joins them if he doesn't join Aaron Rodgers in Denver. Wow. And yeah, all right. Tennessee, Cincinnati. What a job by Joe Burrow. Mm. Gets buried nine times, but figures out a way. And Tannehill was horrendous in that He's game. Awful. I he mean, looked like a rookie quarterback. Some of the decisions he made in that game were ridiculous, trying to fit the ball in those small windows. And it's just, it's rookie quarterback mistakes. And Derek uh, Henry 
you know, wasn't that effective. I tell you who was effective Foreman. He was running hard. Yep, yep. Give him the ball. If you don't think Henry is effective enough, uh, that offense have everything you would want and they just don't do it. The defense did everything they could. And they were <laughs> like, they had nine sacks in the game. I mean, you can't fault the defense at that point. It's Ryan Tannehill turning over the ball and giving Cincinnati short field so they could score. And they're going to, they have been the story this year in the AFC, Joe Burrow, Jamar chase, that offensive line is terrible. I'm not sure if they can do it, but who knows? Maybe they can beat the Chiefs. They did early on this year, so they may have some confidence going into Arrowhead on Sunday night. All right, who do you like? San Francisco, L.A., minus three and a half in Los Angeles. Will be a lot of 49er fans in the, in the building. Remember, they played in week 18. Rams blew a 17-point lead, which, which if, they, if they win the game, the Niners aren't even in the playoffs and the Saints are in the playoffs, and who knows what the seedings would be. The Bucs are not the two seed, so mm-hmm. who knows what this again, what the playoff matchups could have been when the Rams blow a 17-0 lead. Agree. Uh, I'll tell you right now, the Rams are playing some good football right now. I like the Rams too. I like the Rams in this game, but you know, being the homer that I am, I would take the 49ers because I don't want to see the Rams do what the Bucs did last year, so but I'm going to go with the Rams. I'm going to go with the Rams in this game. Stafford is playing high level right now. Von Miller, yep. Leonard Floyd, uh, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey. They have lots of talent. They get over the hump of the San Francisco 49ers, and they don't. Jason Woo! Power, you want to talk about a team that's going to uh, disband or, or, or just break down, that would be the Rams because you don't have any draft picks. You have all this money invested in all those players. Yep. You have to get rid of everybody, whether you win a Super Bowl or not. That's going to be a team that you have to watch during the offseason. So I'll go with the Rams in that game. I like the and I like the Chiefs in Arrowhead. I think the noise will be a factor in Arrowhead. I think the game will be competitive for a while, but I think Mahomes is on a mission. I think it's, you know, he got the break with Tennessee losing. Yeah. I think with the performance he had against Josh Allen and that Buffalo defense, I think the Cincinnati defense is not nearly what the Buffalo defense could potentially be. So I like I like Kansas City to get revenge in Arrowhead, third Super Bowl in a row for one Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I, I like uh, Kansas City also in this game. I love the story of Joe Burrow and these young Cincinnati Bengals, and yep. I'm not ruling it out. But like you said, that defense, I don't necessarily know if they can shut down that Chiefs team. I like Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and that Kansas City Chiefs team big time. All right, Buck fans. Been a real pleasure talking to you guys this year. Everybody, thanks for the support. Buckpower.com. Thank you, Paul Stewart, for everything, giving us the platform to talk. Hopefully, we provided some good content, some good information. Peter Blake, great job talking all things Buccaneers, man. Keep up the great work. Tell everybody where they can find you on the sports web and such. Yeah, the sports web live on Monday and Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock on Facebook. I love St. Pete, the hub. Like and subscribe to the sports web on YouTube and do three things for me, Jason Powers and everybody out there. Bring your passion, bring your excitement. Just don't bring any nonsense. I'm your host, Peter Blake, giving you something to think about. And remember, Powers on Sports Podcast is my podcast. We do, we'll do stuff all throughout the year. We'll talk college hoops. We'll talk baseball stuff. We got a good episode coming out on Thursday of this week as well, talking NFL playoffs more in-depth stuff that we're even more than we're talking tonight. But again, Buck fans, thanks for finding us. Tell your friends about us. Remember, we'll be back here right as free agency starts. We'll be back right around the draft. We'll do a draft episode for you guys. And obviously, we will be definitely be back for, hope we hope, for year two of the No Quarter Given podcast. Again, thanks to Paul Stewart, BuckPower.com, and the BuckPower.com podcast network. I know Paul Stewart's got some other podcasts coming out in February, 1st of March. So be on the lookout for that. And again, Buck fans, tough loss in the divisional round, but we'll know a lot more about this team once Brady makes his decision, kind of where we're going and where we're not going. So thanks for the support, fans. We'll see you next year. And go Bucks on the No Quarter Given Podcast.